So I was running a little bit late on this one here, did not have time to record my typical low quality car intro and walk up, but we sit right down at the 510 table and open it up with a bomb pop. We're playing nine handed to start it up, uh, or actually eight handed, and then another nine person joins shortly after. But you know how we start things up. We get started with a bomb pot. I look down at my cards, which are queen two, jack three, ugly Omaha hand. But nonetheless, that's what we're working with. And then the flop comes, all checks around the turn comes, and I hit some decent equity. So I decide to lead first act for $75 here. I go pretty small in the sizing. They're $25 bomb pots because I really don't mind calls. Uh, eventually, I do get three calls. I have, obviously, full house on the bottom, queen high flush on the top, four ways to a river card, which does not really change much in the context of my hands. Ten of hearts up top, seven of hearts on the bottom. We have queen high flush up top and queens full of threes on the bottom. Who knew this crappy Omaha hand could turn into something so beautiful? So again, I go somewhat small compared to the size of the pot. I bet 225 into three other people leading out, uh, kind of hoping that some weaker hands can call because there's a good chance that we're scooping both boards. There is the off chance that we lose both boards. Um, just one of those spots where, you know, I'm going to lose a lot of money if so. Somebody has pocket kings uh, with like king of spade flush or whatever it is. I'm just going to most likely get stacked here, uh, $3,000 down the drain. But let's be optimistic. I bet out 225 and other player across from me is thinking over his options, thinks about it for a while, counts out a big old stack of green chips and puts in the call, which is good news. Uh, getting re-raised means we are probably good on both boards here. And then next act folds, and it's back over on the gentleman across from me who's fiddling his fingers, looking like he's up to no good. He says, how much is in the pot? And the dealer says, I forget what the number is, but a lot. There's a lot of money in there. And he started the hand with around uh, $2,500 or so. And uh, it just so happens that he can put out a bet of a lot of money. And he says, yep. I bet pot and slides out pretty much all his black chips into the middle. So yeah, back over on us. I want to think about it for just a moment. Um, you know, I just like to gather my thoughts, even though I already know what I'm going to do. And I'm never folding here. I'm not going to repot it, even though I guess maybe you could. But I could be cooler on both boards. No sense in doing that. So after not too long... I ask what the bet amount is. It's like, I don't know, twelve. it was uh, 1200 and some change here on the river. And firsthand, I mean, I've, I've literally been in the room for maybe five minutes. I put in the call, and other guy quickly folds, and we flip over our cards, and he shows the king high flush, and only the king high flush up top. So we chop this up. Pretty decent profit to start off the day. This next hand, we are under the gun. We look down at Ace-King. We're going to see that hand a lot today, the offsuit kind. And we raise it up to $40, and only two players come along to the call. And oddly enough, the two players to the left of me both put in the call. We go to a flop of King-5-7, and I check because it's such an unconnected board. And the player to my left bets out $50. Both these players, I've played with them before. If I lead out here, there's a good chance I'm not going to get any action. So I decide to put in the call and probably just going to lead out on the turn because he'll most likely check back. Suspicious that I have a nice hand, obviously. So I decide to lead out for $150 here. I know it's a weird line, but one, I feel like I just have to take against this opponent. And he shows pocket jacks, quickly throws his hands in the muck, and don't think we would have gotten another bet out of him anyways. So on to the next one. But... Nonetheless, nice to scoop a little pot with Ace-King. So there's actually something going on behind the scenes in real time here that you guys obviously don't get to see because I don't record every hand. But it is like so brutal, the cards that I'm getting. I'm completely card dead this session. I'm not exaggerating when I say I think more than 25% of my hands that I look down at have a 2 or a 3 in them. Uh, and then I'm playing a couple pots where... I have some marginal hands. I bet get like three callers, 
going there. Uh, continuation battle on a flop, that's good for me. I call, then the turn comes, I still have complete air ball. I check, then I get bet, then I have to fold. And this just keeps happening over and over so far in this session. Only like two and a half hours in at this point, but I'm getting a little tilted, trying to stay patient. But nonetheless, it's kind of eating me up. And uh, I'm just trying to maintain a good headspace here. But moving on to this next hand, we look down at Jack 8 Spades. To me, this is the best hand I've looked at in what feels like an hour and a half. So I decide to play it, especially when it folds all the way to the button who raises up to $30. I'm in the big blind. This is an easy defend with Jack 8 suited. So we go heads up to a flop. And we pretty much just flop a gut shot. No spade on the board, which is okay, I guess. But anyways, I check the flop, and then he pretty quickly decides to check back. So since we have a little bit of equity, depending on what turn card comes out, I will most likely make a bet on the turn. And it comes the five of diamonds. So at this point, I don't know. I don't think I'm probably going to win at showdown with Jack High. And I have some equity if I do get called. It might not be the worst thing in the world. I can start to build a pot if I do happen to hit. Bet out a small $35 bet. He doesn't think for too long before putting in the call. And the river comes a miracle, nine of diamonds. We somehow manage to hit our gut shot on the river. There's a flush out there, but whatever. This is a small pot. I won't be losing too much money anyways if he does happen to hit it. So I think for a moment and decide on a modest bet size of just $80. And he doesn't think for too long before he pretty much immediately folds his cards. So yeah, a little frustrating not getting paid any extra money hitting our straight there. I know you guys, like I said, cannot see the session live time, but it is pretty frustrating so far. Being so car dead, not really making much money when we do hit our hand, but nonetheless, on to the next one. This next hand is kind of interesting. I am in middle position. It folds to me. I look down at a beautiful ace queen of spades. I stare at it for quite a while just to make sure it's what I have because I raised a 40. I get one caller over there to my left, and then I get... 3 bet by the small blind, who just picking up on him pretty early looks like a bit of a thinking player. He 3 bets me to $150, maybe sensing that I could be a little weak and then I just have one limper behind me. So I make sure that I get my hands in the camera, just so you can see that all my hair has been trimmed on my hands. Courtesy of you guys telling me that my hands were too hairy, uh, my first couple vlogs. And I think about it for quite a while, and... I think there's a lot of merit to four betting here uh, just because small blind looking at this player I know he's going to have like a three bet or fold kind of strategy there and he could definitely be three betting me light. If I had like pocket jacks or probably even pocket tens or pocket queens here uh, or kings I'd probably just put in the four bet and try to go heads up worst case scenario but with ace queen suited I really don't mind going to a flop three ways in position so for that reason after thinking about it for a while I decided to just put in the flat call and uh, welcome the guy in behind me. Again, this hand, I don't mind that, and especially uh, being in position from the three better. Not too concerned about the player over there to my left, but she eventually puts in the call as well. So we go three ways to a flop, which comes 7-7 seven, seven, ace. So we hit top pair, couple sevens out there. Only one I would be concerned about is the player to my left. She definitely likes to get in there with some weirder hands, but nonetheless, three bet pot shouldn't have too many sevens. It's on him, and of course, on an ace high board, whether any two cards this guy has on his hands, he's going to make a continuation bet. He doesn't let me down, and he does. He throws out a bet of 130. I pretty quickly put in the call, and the player to my left folds. And he does not have very much behind. He bought in a little short here. And the turn comes the King of Hearts. Don't really love this card. Pocket Kings obviously gets there, but I just don't think he has Pocket Kings. I don't think he's overly strong. He doesn't think for too long before he goes all in for like $300, less than half pot. I quickly put in the call, flip over my cards pretty confident. And the river comes uh, blank with the Four of Clubs. I flip over, like I said, my Ace Queen. And he thinks for a moment and flips over Ace Jack offsuit kind of a hand that I put him on and with the king on the turn that means we both have a seven two pair with the king kicker so we frustratingly chop this one up after uh looking forward to stacking this opponent felt pretty good about it 
but knew when the king hit that I was there was a good chance I was going to be chopping this. Nonetheless, uh, no blood, I guess. But again, feels frustrating to uh, not make the money when I had the superior hand. But what can you do? Have to move on to the next one. This next hand, another interesting one. There is a raise from early position to 35. I bump it up on the button to 110. The big blind, oddly enough, cold calls, and then the original razor comes along for a call as well. So three ways to a flop, which is not that great for my hand. It comes 3-3-7. Three, three, Action checks to me. I think about betting for a moment because they likely miss two, but I don't feel like getting check raised by a flush draw or some nonsense, so I decide to check it back. Try to go to a turn card, which comes a nice one with the king of hearts. So we hit top pair, top kicker. There are two threes out there, but not too concerned because this was a three bet pot. And then oddly enough on this, the big blind decides to lead out for $175. Player across from me puts in the call and I'm kind of in a weird spot here. Um, I think the right move is to just flat call here, I guess, in position. Like, let them just keep barreling with whatever they might have. So I put in the call, still three ways to a river card, which is not great. It's the four of clubs. Big blind does not let up. She bets out another $200, and I don't know. She's played so many weird hands and just leads out all the time when she shouldn't. I don't know. I'm um, getting like a million to one. Other guy folds, so more incentive to put in the call. I slip it in, and she shows me five, three of hearts in a three bet pot. And ladies and gentlemen, that is officially the straw that broke the camel's back. I go in full tilt mode, say nice hand, tap the table, and I really don't ever do this. I'm always a good sport, but the way today has gone, I just decide to. Get up, take a breather, walk away, walk outside, get some uh, mental clarity, and uh, record a little intermission for you guys. All right, guys, just taking a little breather here. Have been uh, extremely car dead, feels like all day. I'm not even exaggerating. I think 25% of the hands that I've looked down at have had a deuce in them. So two 10 off suit, seven deuce off suit four deuce off suit a bunch of times. I mean, God, I've only recorded a couple hands and um, I've been here for like three hours or more. Um, just most of the hands aren't getting recorded because it's making it to the flop, totally bricking and yeah, folding, facing a raise, folding, etc., etc., over and over. So pretty frustrating session so far, um, down like 500 bucks. So could be a lot worse, I know, but Anyway, gonna go in here, uh, battle it out, hopefully get some more interesting plays for you guys, and hopefully get some cards that are worth playing. Let's go back in here, lighten up the spirits. Let's go. As soon as we get back, we go straight to Bomb Pot City and look down at another pretty ugly hand for Omaha. King Jack, 8-6, Rainbow. And the flop comes, not recording yet, checks around. The turn comes and I realize, oh my God, I just flopped or I uh, turned the nuts on the top board and I'm open-ended on the bottom board. So I decide to bet out $75 and I get three callers. So we're going four ways to a river with a pretty decent sized bomb pot brewing, hoping to get some more equity on the bottom board. And the river is pretty bittersweet, pairs the board up top, giving me no longer the nuts, but the bottom board does give me the Broadway straight. The board is double paired, so I'm not feeling too great. I'm not going to bet into all these people. I decide to check. Action checks around pretty quickly, and I flip over my cards. And what do you know? We scoop both boards. I have not scooped a bomb pot in quite a while. And uh, feels good to take this one down, uh, especially a $525 pot. So a little momentum builder, feeling good, moving into the next hand. We are in the cutoff. We look down at two black nines and raise it up to $35. The small blind and big blind both decide to come along with a call. Three ways to a flop, which comes all hearts, but we do hit bottom set with our pocket nines, and they both pretty quickly check. I check back on this one. I think you could always bet too, but I don't know. For some reason, I decided to check back. I could get value from an ace or one heart holdings, but uh, the big blind goes ahead and leads out for $50, and then... I just put it in the flat call. Again, I think I could be playing a little bit more aggressive. 
He checks again on the river. I bet out $75 and he says, I call, I have an ace. And that is no good, obviously. We flip over our pocket nines and take down a decent little pot. So I didn't get it recorded, but shortly after that last hand, I uh, torched about $600 into thin air. Uh, in a bomb pot, I was, there was three of us, ended up making a big call on the river against two guys. And uh, very tough for me to not win at least one board on it, but that's what happened. So <laughs> those guys chopped the pot, and I was the uh, big loser. So yeah, $600 torched, and uh, told them afterwards, nice playing that with you guys. I enjoyed that. But anyways, we're moving on to this hand. When we look down at King Queen of Clubs, there is a raise from early position to $30 and a pretty loose guy to my right re-raises to only $75. Puts me in kind of a weird spot. Um, I decided to just flat call this uh, three bet. No sense to really four bet, I guess. Uh, it's just a weird sizing. Kind of puts me in a weird, weird area decision-wise. So I decided to flat call and then uh, the original raiser comes along as well, obviously getting that price. So we go three ways to a flop. Which comes definitely ideal for our hand. King, four, jack, two spades, one club. Uh, the original three better, I guess you could call him that, weird sizing, like I said. Uh, he checks uh, to me. I'm going to obviously check. And then the original razor who called the three bet goes ahead and checks back. So we get a free turn card, which is the seven of spades. And the original three better goes ahead and checks again. I'm not going to be checking this back. I need to start putting some money in here and getting some value from some hands. So I decided to bet out $75. Guy across the table snap folds and the guy to my right puts in the call. River comes. The nine of clubs. So an open and a straight gets there. And I just don't think my hand is too strong to be betting again. So when he checks to me with my top pair, queen kicker, on such a wet and connected board, I don't want to get trapped and get checked, raised, put to a tough decision. So I decide to just check back, see where I'm at. I flip over my cards, and we are good. That leads us to our last hand of the session. There's one limp before me. I look down a King Jack offsuit and decide to bump it up to $40. And we get three callers. So we go four ways to a flop, which comes King, four, eight. So top pair, Jack kicker. And action does not check to me. Seems to be a repetitive story of the day. But this time, I actually happen to have a hand. So the guy to my right leads out for $100 over a half size bet. And I call. Obviously, not much else to do here. Could maybe raise, but don't really see the point. And the player to my left calls as well. So three ways to a turn card, which is not good. It's the eight of clubs. I've seen all kinds of opponents, recreational players, lead out uh, when they have like a middle or bottom pair just to see where they're at. And that means that they could have hit in trips by now. He continues for $100. Again, I don't see much else to do but put in the call, so that's what I do. And the player to my left puts in the fold, thankfully. And the river brings the 10 of clubs. Doesn't really change much. And he bets $200, so a little bit bigger bet. But at the same time, I'm getting just such great odds. And he could be doing this with any kind of king himself. So I think about it for a little bit. Uh, like I said, like you guys know, I always like to think about my decisions. But I realize I'm never going to fold here. So I put in the call and he flips over king nine of hearts. So we take our final pot of the day. Luckily, we were able to come back a little bit at the end. We were down like $1,500. Uh, God, maybe even more at one point and fought our way back all the way to a $3,000 stack. Feels bad to uh, just... Really not run great uh, in such a game that had so much potential to make more money. But sometimes that's just the way it is. Can't let it get to you. And uh, we decide to grab our chip stack, go ahead, head to the register, and call it a session. You know what time it is, low quality outro time, playing uh, past dark once again. Played for about eight and a half hours today. And um, I don't, maybe, I think like nine, nine and a half, I don't know, haven't looked yet. In the game for 3,600 total and out for $3,002. So little $600 loss, playing at 510 where uh, you're really getting nothing going your way 
for the most part. I mean, I, I feel like I just never got going. Uh, there were a lot of hands towards the end that I didn't record that, thank God, I was able to run it back because um, I was down like $1,500, $1,600 at one point uh, and kind of clawed my way back. And um, yeah, I was never in the positive for today. It's just one of those days. I'm thankful though that I didn't run horribly bad. I just really didn't run good. Um, so $600 loss at 510, it's not the end of the world uh, by any means. But uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Hope you guys enjoyed the hands regardless. And uh, we will see you on the next vlog very soon. And also, I am going to work on increasing my upload frequency. Asked you guys in the last video, and you're saying to do it. So I'm going to try my very best. Uh, life is busy, but I really want to help this channel grow and uh, keep bringing you guys more content. So we will see you on the next one. And as always, I appreciate you watching. Peace.